All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you, as usual, from a beautiful blue sky San Diego. And today I'm joined by Dr. Janice Presser, who is in, I hope, an equally blue sky Florida. Mm-hmm. Lovely. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Janice uh, is a system scientist and architect of the technology that powers team ability and has studied interaction in academic, clinical, and business settings for over 25 years, all about teams. And what we're going to talk about today is, uh, and this is uh, from the point of view of the team as opposed to the team manager, is in sales, how do you manage your manager? And it's funny, it's one of the things that uh, uh, I've often talked to people about uh, when they get a promotion or when they start their job, they always say, uh, what's, you know, what's one of the key things I always say is managing upwards is one of the most, is one of the most underrated but critical skills that you can have. And, and, it's, uh, and so right now, Janice, uh, the reality is, especially in sales, there's probably a lot of people on sales teams who are getting frantic calls from sales managers, et cetera, trying to see what's happening with revenue given the crisis that we're in right now. And it may be getting stressful and emotional out there. So what are some of the ways people can uh, maybe be proactive in managing that interaction? Well, you have to start by understanding one big thing. Not everybody sees the world in the same way. <laughs> and so if you're in sales, being a frontline salesperson which is very close to my heart. So it's always been my most favorite thing to do. But being in the front lines is very different than being the sales manager. And it has to do with if you enjoy one, you probably really don't enjoy the other. I mean, you might take the promotion because you want to bring yeah, more money sure. in. They have children whose little mouths want to be fed. But there is one way of being that's closer to you. So let me give you a little background on that. If you really, really love selling, that real frontline stuff, then what really motivates you is taking care of people and them letting you know that they're happy, you satisfied them. So that's why we're always telling people, sell something you believe in. Because mm. if you don't believe in it, then you won't feel like you're really helping somebody and, and really giving them something that they need. But if you really like being a sales manager, or for that matter, you're really into marketing, you know, kind uh, of the intellectual, the pre-work of the sale, that's not your main motivation. Your real main motivation is exercising the, what we call the exercise of authority, power yeah. in pure form, but not power over people in a negative sense. Sure. Sense that you're guiding them to some grand goal that's off in the distance. Mm -hmm. So think about yourself as the frontline salesperson yep. and the person you report to, who very likely in these days of everything shutting down, terrible yeah. uncertainty and stress for everyone, is uh, probably all over you saying, are you going where I told you to go? Yeah. You know, if you think of your sales manager as the one who wants to be your shepherd, your guide, you know, you know how shepherds keep their little lambs, uh, you know, on the uh, straight and narrow. They have, a, you know, the couple of tools, they have a rod, you know, they don't yeah. beat them over the head, though, the good ones yeah. use that to kind of direct them in the path mm -hmm. that they want them to go like yeah. a good yeah. sales manager does. Mm -hmm. But they also have this other little thing, like if you remember little Bo Peep who lost her sheep, right, she's always shown with that little crook. Think yeah, that, yeah. That's to grab them by their little necks if they fall yeah. off a cliff. Yeah, yeah. So your manager wants to, you know, they've planned out the master plan for the next 10 years, five, whatever they've planned it out for. You just need to make that next sale, right? You know, mm -hmm. you want to bring home, literally bring home the bacon, you know, make the whatever your goal is, uh, get that next whatever big sales incentive you have. But they're looking much further. And so for them, if they don't feel that you're on that path, then they're going to get 
really stressed out. And you do not want a stressed out sales manager because that's when the crazy behavior that you don't like sports, right? Yeah. We well, it, it's true. I mean, if you think about it, the the average tenure, they still say of a sales manager is like 14 months or something. So the stress levels of it are, are pretty high. And I think to your point, uh, a lot of a lot of sales managers are were great salespeople who got promoted and took the promotion, but really would probably be better off staying as salespeople. Right. And as they got better, they probably need less management. So there's a whole yeah. lot of efficiency <laughs> to be gotten. And then unless you do something really, really foolish, like putting a cap on their incentive bonus. Yeah. Yeah, never do idea. that. Never people, do that. So, Believe it or not, people still do it, and I still have to p- tell people that. I, I never, I never understood that bit, a bit about why would you, why would you incentivize a salesperson to work this hard and then say stop? <laughs> it makes no sense. And yet I, ha- I was once in my office, and a very wise person was visiting me. Just one of these generally acknowledged as being wise mm-hmm. people. And in the middle of that, I had a quick conversation with someone else who came in. And after that, and I said, basically, look, tell them they have to take these ceilings off of what they're giving their salespeople. Mm-hmm. This is crazy. And so the, after they left, this person said, what were you talking about? I said, well, you know, I mean, even in our company, my dearest desire is to have my five top salespeople make them three times what I make, yeah, yeah, four times, exactly. 10 times, exactly. 100 times. Yeah. And they said, but you can't do that. And I said, okay. And then I remembered, you know, I'm a scientist. So I took mm. a lot more math than most people. And I, <laughs> so I got my pad out. I said, let me run the numbers for you, <laughs> right? They get 12% or 14 or whatever right. it is for this. But the company gets this percent and out of that, I get a good bit of it, so why would I stop them? Yeah, I I'm not sure that I got through on that, but there are yeah. and they're if you and obviously, and if you run a if you run a a tiered system where you know the more they sell, they move up percentage points. Yes. Here's here's the beautiful thing is they keep working just as hard at the end of the year, if not harder, because they're reaching the top levels and they want to maximize that. So you get, not only do you get motivated people, but you get people who can who work harder and work up to the last second of your fiscal year. And here's a little secret. There's something that adds to somebody being a really great salesperson. They're generally family people. Mm-hmm. And very often, they're not just making that money for them. They're making it, for their family. Uh, I mean, that's just that's just a truism. So if you're great at sales, mm-hmm. you're probably not only the great parent, but you're the kind of next door neighbor I want, because I can always count right. on you. You might not have any time for it, but I can always count on you to, to help out because yeah. you and really I, want to help people. And I, think that, and I think that's a really good point because I don't think that, that managers or executives or whomever uh, very often ask salespeople what motivates them. And they just assume, well, it's money that motivates them. Yes, but for what? To what end, right? Where is that money going? And as you say, it may be going to, I want to put all my kids through the best colleges. I want to, whatever it is, whatever it is they want to do. But you know, if you dig a little deeper, then you understand like the real motivations. Exactly. And they're not all that complicated. We all have the same motivations. There are, there are three basic biological ones, but we have them in different proportions. Mm-hmm. And so when you confront somebody in an interaction who is not like you in that way, you have to kind of get into their head. So for managing up, if you can understand what it is that your manager is after, you mm-hmm. can do things like saying, you know, it's really difficult. Nobody's in their office now. <laughs> it's hard to get people on thing. But I am on the path that you set out in however they set it out. Thus, master sales plan. And it's probably, and being honest, it's probably going to be X number of months longer to get there because of all these things going on. But I'm on your team and I'm going there because you said that's where we're going. And so you're acknowledging their leadership 
And that's really, really important to people who really live and breathe management. Management's really tough. No, I mean, it is. It is. And I think and I think in, in the case that you're talking about in the circumstances we're in today, right, when the when the sales, I mean, the sales manager or whatever, who you're managing, they're not stupid. They know things are tough out there, right? And they know that uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of shutdown and businesses are, are laying people off. So it's difficult to sell, right? They already know that. What, what, you, what you want as a manager from your people is to know that although things are tough, they're doing everything they can, right? So instead of, if I call you up and you just said to me, Janice, you just said, Oh yeah, John. Listen, I'm not going to be bringing in much uh, revenue because of the coronavirus. You know the way it is. Right? That's not what I want to hear. Right? I understand that, but I want to hear. So, so what are you doing? What, to the best of your ability, as you say, to continue to be on the right path, even as difficult as it is? I've been working on some emails to people because maybe while they're not answering their phone, they might see an email. And you know, what do you think of this? If I can ask you as my sales manager mm -hmm. for your input, I'm going to be saying, I still see you as my expert, yep. even though you're not throwing leads to me and things are not difficult. And I'm going to get you into your zone, your super comfort zone, being my manager. And mm. that's going to bring you down and take away some of that stress. Now, little secret, if I can get you to feel that when you hang around with me, you know, whether by phone or video chat or face to face, mm -hmm. it, you feel better. You see, you don't even have to be conscious of the fact that you do. You just have to feel better. You're going to like me a whole lot <laughs> or at least tolerate me more. Mm -hmm. Right. And because you're going to feel better about yourself, you're going to relax and, you know, you're not going to be as tough on me because I'm going to build confidence in you. And that you'll be able to then take back to whoever it is that's on your back. And believe me, whoever is on your manager's back is a hundred times worse than oh, whatever yeah. manager is on your back. Because the higher up you go in organizations, the more distant people get mm. from that basic truism of selling, which is I am here to make your life better, to help you in some way. Uh, in fact, you know, that's, it, we often, we often think of our customers as family. Mm -hmm. They feel in the best kind of way, we feel like that. And that's what makes it so tough because we're distant now <laughs> from everybody yeah. that we care about, our customers, our, our coworkers, our yeah. families, and, uh, but, you know, keeping um, a and people are people are hurting, but I like I like what you said there because uh, the the natural instinct is right now. Okay, so if your if your phone calls or you're on Slack or whatever it is you however you communicate and you see it's your manager, your your first reaction probably is to go oh no, and and then you get defensive. But what you just said there is if you immediately answer it and go oh I'm glad you called. Yes. Right? I'm glad you called. Uh, I, I wanted to get. I wanted to get some. First of all, I wanted to get an update from you, and I want to get some insight and advice from you. Right. Now, that's a completely different scenario. Right. You just disarmed them. Right. Completely. You, acknowledging that somebody has expertise when they're at a time when they're feeling mm -hmm. anything but. Yeah. Yeah. They're all feeling like incident right now. Yeah. It, life is rough. Um, you know, they uh, not to mention the fact that they probably get a little kicker for the better you do, right? Because that's what sure. them as sales manager. So they're probably worried about what is their end of the year going to look like. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, the the uh, when I mentioned salespeople, you know, being often having very strong family feelings, we've we've got the worst calendar. We have our holidays pretty much at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So here you are wanting to you know, make your mark, be the best. And then layered on top of that is giving your family the best holiday or, you know, making things wonderful. And everybody's biggest nightmare is the getting laid off at the holiday mm -hmm. scenario. And so by engendering that goodwill, you're kind of putting money in the bank with your manager. And uh, you're also going to come away 
with a better understanding of what is it like to be a sales manager. And then you can make a very good choice. Either that's something I want to do. I yeah. wonder to get on that track or I want to keep being the most super salesperson and I want to make more than the CEO. And if you're working yeah. for a good company, yeah. and do that. Yeah. And you know something, I, if you're working for the right company, they, the day you make more than the CEO, the first person you should hear from is the CEO congratulating you because that's a sign of a good company. Absolutely. And if it's me, you're getting a cake. <laughs> <laughs> Although you're paying for it now that you're making more money than me. I'm probably I'm probably baking it because yeah. it's gonna, it's going to be uh, personal and you know I'm a man too. <laughs> um, so, what are some other ways that, uh, especially in times of stress, that people can manage upwards in a, in a positive and proactive fashion? Well, one thing is also to understand what are the things that your manager does not like to do. Mm. So, in the best of all worlds. That is the world where I'm putting your sales team together and advising your CEO that this is the best way to do it. We have lots of frontline salespeople, a good manager, a separate sales trainer if you need that. If it, you're yeah. mm -hmm. uh, selling your product has complications or technical aspects to it. And then you've got a sales support person. Now, unfortunately, in days like that, that's probably the first person that got fired. And then what you have are a bunch of salespeople who come off the road and then they have to sit down there and write the report, you know, the report with the expenses mm -hmm. and the what you accomplished. In the best running sales teams, you have a dedicated support person, you know, and I used to describe it to, to consulting clients. I used to say, listen, here's what you need. You get somebody who loves, 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 loves to organize stuff put it in charts and fill out forms. And there are many wonderful people like that. Yeah. I've been blessed by having some of them work for me. Mm -hmm. And so what you have is one person like that. And you tell everyone when you come off the road, go to that person's desk. And by the way, this can be, you know, man, woman, or yet to decide, does not, <laughs> gender has nothing to do with it, right? There's there nothing goes with this. It's the, you know, kind of the intel inside. It's what yeah. is in your heart. Dump everything on their desk and make sure you smile and say, good to be back. I've got sales call, uh, calls to make. And then go back, get on the phone and organize your next, uh, you know, your whoever you need to talk to next mm -hmm. and get yourself back in sales mode and forget the rest. You will be able to devote 100% of your time to selling, which is going to make you happy. Yeah. You're going to have one person who can probably handle all the organization for mm -hmm. lots and lots of people. It's an enormous efficiency. And if you're in the very best kind of company, that assistant is going to get a piece of the enhanced action that happens yeah. because you're not taking wonderful salespeople and then making them sit there and torturing them by having them organize all their receipts and you know that stuff. And I don't care how many great apps you have. There are apps and you scan mm -hmm. and stuff. A human being needs to check and make sure that you get your expense money back and you haven't done anything weird uh, and that your time is whatever, whatever your company accounts for time travel and, and other things. And that then coming together, rather than being competitive, having what I can't remember mm -hmm. who it was that made up this wonderful word, co-opetition. Yeah, co-opetition. Yeah. competition, you know, yeah. where you're sharing your best practices and little tips and tricks and stuff like that, because everyone starts to sell better when everyone's doing that, unless you have a very crazy company that decides yeah. to change the deal, which is not a good idea, then what you have is more aggregate money going into the pot and the ability for your company to then, let's say, invent some new wonderful thing for you to add on sell giving you an excuse to go back to your best customers and saying, I want you to be the first to see yeah. our super new sparkly widgets. Um, and, you know, it just allows for the growth of organizations where everybody is 
contributing to this big vision, what they themselves do the best because they like it the best. Yeah. And I think this is a, it's a great note to, to end on, uh, Dr. Janice, because uh, I think when when this cycles through, I think going back to your best customers is going to be a place where a lot of people are should start again, because it's going to take time to build up business. Before we go, though, you have a... You have an interesting book uh, that I would like you to share with everybody. <laughs> yeah. I, I have an Amazon author page. It's just amazon.com author slash Dr. Janice. Uh, and this is actually a, uh, a backlist book. It's, it's the third edition. It's called Inspiring Parenthood. And while you're home, uh, because you probably are if you're in the vast mm-hmm. majority now of the world, um, maybe you're taking on a little bit more parenting activity, or maybe you're going to volunteer to um, distance babysit for somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, it might give you a little bit of inspiring. So when you think about what inspires you, inspiring other people, especially your family, just yeah. makes it easier and relaxes everybody. You'll do a better job when you're less stressed. Yeah, and we will have uh, a link to the book in in Dr. Janice's contributor bio as well. But hey, I think that's one of the uh, one of the great opportunities that this this uh, crisis is giving us is the opportunity for people to reconnect with their family. To maybe you maybe you this is your first time working at home or whatever, and maybe you're you're having difficulty adjusting to it. But hey, you get to have breakfast with your kids. You know, you get to have dinner with your kids. You got, I mean, there's so many things. There's so much upside to it all. And you're probably going to find that you actually work more efficiently and and, and better. But that's that's just my bias because we've been doing it for running a larger virtual organization for six years now. And and uh, we haven't missed a beat, to be perfectly honest. Uh, you know, we've been blessed in that way. But I love that. So uh, inspiring parenthood. I, I uh, encourage people to to check it out. This is Dr. Janice. It's been fantastic. Uh, time's flown by. Absolutely uh, enjoyed it. Yeah, thank you. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all soon for another expert interview. Yeah.